morning, everyone. Please stand and we'll worship together. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my too. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my too. Till I met you, you called my name.
Yeah. 
Let's pray. Lord, you are just incredible. We love you so much, Lord. Just the fact that we can come here and sing to you. So many times we take that for granted. We don't think about the gift that we have. To be able to come to holy God and to sing before you, even though we are nothing. And just like that song says, you laid your life down for us, even though we were sinners. And so I pray that we remember that today, Lord. Please speak to us and pour into us, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Doing good? Doesn't sound like it but I hope you are. <laughs> um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Nathaniel Vargo. I am the youth pastor here at Freedom Bible Church. And for those of you who do know me, you're probably wondering why is your hair orange, okay? And that is because I love my youth kids. And if you like your hair, don't be a youth pastor, okay? Because it will not stay the same for the rest of your life, all right? so. That's why my hair is orange. Um, but today, I wanna talk to you guys about our missions trip that we went on with our youth group. Uh, this is the first one that we did, and it was just an incredible time. And don't worry, if you're here, I'm, I'm still giving a sermon, okay? I'm gonna give you some backgrounds of what we did, but I'm still gonna speak to you, and I hope that you can know and understand what God did through us, but also what he did in us 
And please pray with me, and then we will begin. God, you are incredible. And there's just so many things that you did through our lives in this week, and I pray as we talk about it, and as I share the memories that we have, that you would use it for your glory. And that what happened over that week wouldn't just be a week-long thing, but it would continue to grow in our lives so we can understand that you are an awesome God and there is power in your gospel. And I pray, God, that the congregation and I would go out and we would seek the lost and we would seek to show them love so that they can have a relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I got a little slideshow for you guys. And the first slide is going to come up. This is our missions trip 2019. And a little background before we get to the missions trip. There were five of us going. There was me. There was my wife, Tori. Uh, Antonio, my cousin. We had Brianna, Lucier, and we had Phil. And so the five of us are going. And before we went to the Dominican Republic, we were actually supposed to go to Haiti. And we were going with the organization Mission of Hope Haiti. And the total cost for our trip was supposed to be $5,000. And that was for all of us to go. That was flights. That was everything. $5,000. We're good to go. And of course, we did some fundraising for that. You guys know this. And what ended up happening was you guys ended up giving us $7,000. And so now, you know, as a youth pastor, I'm like, what do I do with this extra 2,000 bucks? Do I, do I give it back? <laughs> I don't know what to do, you know? And so, uh, you know, what's funny is, is I get a phone call from Mission of Hope Haiti, and they say that Haiti is a level five travel advisory. And because of this, we were not able to go to Haiti. But what they said was, um, are you guys okay with going to the Dominican Republic? And I'm like, sure. Why not? We just want to go wherever God wants us to go. And well, it sounds good to us. And they said, but here's the deal. If you're going to the Dominican Republic, it's probably going to cost you an extra $2,000. <laughs> and I was like, my answer changes from sure to absolutely. This is exactly where we were called to be. And I just want you guys to know that you are the ones who sent us. We didn't have to pay a single dollar to go, and everything that we did here, everything that we were a part of, you were a part of it as well. And I pray that you know that and that you understand that you are a part of what we did. And I'm so grateful that you guys sent us. And so our trip was flight or our booked, and we were ready to go, and we were leaving out of Miami at 9:50 p.m. And so we drive there, we get there, everything is good. We land in the Dominican Republic at 12 at night. And then we have a three hour drive to where we were staying. So we arrived where we would be for the rest of the week at three in the morning. And we were tired, but we were so ready to go. And so this leads into our first day in the Dominican Republic. And it was Thursday. It was very informal day, okay? We, or informational day. We, learned a lot. We have never done this before. We had no idea what was going to happen. Uh, we knew a little bit about what we were going to do because they sent me an email Thursday before and they said, hey, you guys are going to be serving in the village of La Union. And the pastor of that village, what he would like to do is he would like to do a VBS. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. Sounds good. VBS. We like VBS. It's awesome. And then he says, what we would like you guys to do is we would like you to write out the lesson plans for VBS. And now we're like, wait, now we gotta write out lesson plans. You know, in America, it's like, oh, VBS, let's go online, find a curriculum, and that one looks good, let's do it. Sounds good, right? But he's like, no, we need you to write it out. And then I'm like, these people don't speak English. So well, now what am I supposed to do? Just write it in English and then translate it. And so, you know, we're like, but we're gonna do it. This is what God has called us to do. And so we, we do it, and we, we leave, and we go off to the village of La Union, and we were going to be doing VBS and SMT. And I will talk a little bit about SMT later. And um, so as we're in La Union, well, actually, before we make it to La Union, we're on our truck, and we're driving there, and Tori brings up 
this such a good point. And she's like, you know, when we go on, or when you go on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're looking, and you see these people and they have videos of their missions trips, and all you see is the kids, and they walk into the village, and the kids are just, they're running to them. Like, they are so excited to see these people. And she's like, I wonder, like, how long is that going to take for us? Is it going to be, like, the next day or is at the end of the week? They're finally, like, we're excited to see them. And she's like, I don't know. Is that how it's going to be? We have no idea. We've never done this before. So we're like, what's going to happen? And so we pull up to the village, and we pray, and we walk up. There's, like, a little hill that you walk up to the church. And as soon as we walk through that door, there are about 30 kids in there, and they are all over us. I mean, they are jumping on our backs. They're climbing on. They're trying to punch each other as they're on our backs. They're braiding the girl's hair. They are doing everything possible. They're dancing. They're singing. They are just so excited to see us. I'm like, we haven't even spent 20 seconds with them, and they're already excited for what's going to happen, and that just gives you energy. Like now you're like, oh, I'm ready. Let's do some VBS. Let's share the gospel. Let's do whatever we can. And so we do our VBS in our English lesson, and our first one was on the creation of the world. We talked about how God created the world, and the whole time we would speak. So someone would get up, just like I am, and they would give the lesson, and there was a translator that would translate every word that we said. So we'd say about five words, they'd translate it. Five words, translate. And that's how it was every single time we did VBS or really every time we talked to anyone because not many people speak English. And so everything was translated. And so after VBS, we'd go out and there was this huge field and we would go out and just run around with the kids. And I don't know how they do it because it's hot, but we would just run around for hours and we're like, I'm done. <laughs> I can't run anymore. But they're just still going and you're like, all right, let's keep going. We can do it. And it's just such, it was such an incredible time. We didn't even speak the same language, but we got to make relationships just through actions and playing. And it was incredible. And after, after that, we ate some lunch, and now it was time for our second part of what we would be doing. And it was called SMT. And SMT stands for Strategic Ministry Time. And during this time, what we would do is we would walk through the village, and either the pastor's wife or one of the, the guys that works at the church, they would walk us and we would go to random people's houses. And so we'd stop at their house and we would just talk with them. And we'd say, hey, do you mind if we come sit with you and talk? Um, and we would ask them questions about who they are. We'd ask them, you know, how are you? How are things going for you and your family? Are you sick? Are you well? And just all these questions, and all it would do is it would lead us to know who they are, and then we'd dive in and say, are you a believer in Christ? What does it mean for you to be a believer in Christ? Is there anything we can do to help you? Is there any questions we can answer? And so strategic ministry time was specifically going door to door and talking and getting to know them and sharing the gospel with them. And I will tell you, this first day, I was terrified. <laughs> I'm like, man, I can't speak for everybody else, but I am so nervous. And everyone's like, dude, you're the youth pastor. You should be the guy that's like, yeah, let's do this. I was terrified. These are, this is a different country with different people that we know nothing about. And they're like, yeah, let's go there, get to know them, share the gospel with them. It'll be great. And I will be honest with you. I was scared. And this first day, the interns that were with us, they helped us out a lot. And they're like, the first day we will guide you and we will kind of do most of the talking but we want you guys to get to the point where you are the ones leading and the ones who are talking with these people and so we go out the first day and the interns kind of guide and we talk with these people and we just kind of see what they do and how they do it and how they ask these questions to lead and talk to them about their faith and and not only that because one thing I realized in America, sometimes we're like, hey, are you a believer in Christ? And someone says yes, and we're like, cool. But there, you know, it's like, they'd be like, are you a believer in Christ? And they would say yes. And they'd say, so what does that mean to you? What is Christ doing in your life right now? Because the specifics of asking those questions is not just do you believe in Christ, but if you do, 
God should be doing something in your life, right? And so we get to the nitty gritty and we don't just stop there, but we ask them and say, what is God doing? What are you struggling with? How can we help you? What verses can we give you? And it was just such an awesome learning experience to see how they did this and what they did. And after SMT, we'd go back to our housing place and we'd just stay there and hang out for the rest of the day. Uh, there was no AC, so all we did was just hang out in the pool every day. <laughs> so we'd get back, we'd go in the pool, we'd get out, we'd eat dinner, we'd go back in the pool. And then it'd be about 10.30 at night and we're like, I guess it's time to go in the bedroom and go to sleep. <laughs> but we would, we'd just rather sleep in the pool, honestly. It felt way better in there. <laughs> but that, that was our first day. And then we went to our second day on Friday. And when we woke up, we, we were supposed to go back to La Union and do the exact same thing. But today was a little different because there was a change of plans. And La Union was having a village they had an event going on in the village. We don't exactly know what it was. And so they said, since this event's going on, you're not going to go there. But instead, you're going to do a sports camp in a different village. So we're like, OK, let's go. Let's do it. And so we go to this village. And the sports camp, first thing we did is we taught some English. And I'm very glad that Phil and Antonio were with me because my Spanish is absolutely terrible. Okay, I don't know. I know hola, and that's about it. And they, you know, they did so much better. And so we taught them just basic English words, colors, animals, certain things like that. And after English, we went out, and all we did was just hang out with the students. And we would play basketball. We would play soccer. And we just, it's incredible to me realizing that relationships don't just come from words. Because we, we physically can't speak to them. And so we can understand laughter, and we can understand just a relationship where you're enjoying time together, and you're just hanging out, and you're playing basketball, and you're playing soccer, and we build relationships, and some of them, we don't even know their names. They don't even know our names. But we have this relationship where we will never forget them. I have faces in my mind where I will never forget who they are just because I was able to create a relationship just by hanging out with them. And, you know, this day was so cool and it was so incredible, but I, I could tell that our group, our hearts were in La Union and we wanted to go back there. We were ready to go back there. And so we would make it there on Monday. But now it is Saturday. Saturday was our free day. It was our beach day. So we were very excited for that. And the Dominican Republic, it's, it's basically your typical island paradise. Because you go to the beach and the sand is incredible. The water is crystal clear and it's incredible. And so we hung out at the beach. We went snorkeling. We did a banana boat ride. We had some really good lunch at a restaurant. Uh, we also got harassed by the shop sellers. And it was funny because Phil, we're walking by and every single one of you said that one of them says something. You know, you're like, I can't walk by without saying something. One guy's talking and Phil's like, listen, I'll come back after lunch. Okay. And the guy says to him, he's like, oh, you're really easy to spot out, so I'm going to be looking for you. <laughs> and we were laughing so hard. But it was just an enjoyable day to experience God's creation and see a lot of the country. Because we didn't just go to the beach. As we drove around, we could see just the way that things work and things operate. And it's so different there. But it was really cool. And uh, Sunday was our church day. It's the same there as it is here. We were staying at the beach campus, but on Sunday we drove and we went to the mountain campus. And that's where we did church. But you can see in these pictures, this campus is beautiful. I mean, it's kind of like that log cabin, just quiet. They have this massive pool and they have these walkways and there's just this mountain view in the background. Every way you turn, there's just mountains all around, and it's so beautiful. And we go up, and we worship, and as we're singing, we're worshiping God as we're looking at this view. And it's just such an incredible experience to envision in my mind and remember the worship I had of seeing God's creation and worshiping Him because He's the one who created it. And during church, there was a man who spoke to us, and that man had been a missionary for 30 years. 
in the Dominican Republic. And so he talked to us and he spoke about his own experience and his life and things that he did. But his main message to us was the importance of being a missionary at home. And that being a missionary isn't just something you do once a week or once a month where you go overseas and you share the gospel. It's something you should be doing every single day, wherever you are. And so it was really cool to hear that. And after church, we went to another campus. There's three campuses in the Dominican Republic. And there we hung out with everyone who was serving with Mission of Hope that week. So 300 people who had came from America or maybe different places, and we just hung out and talked and relaxed. And it was a really, it was a really good day. It was a relaxing day. Um, but now we're back to Monday, and we're back in the village of La Union. And we, we go and we do our VBS at the beginning, and our VBS was on the birth and the life of Jesus. And Phil stepped out of his comfort zone, and he gave the message, and he did it like a pro. So don't let him tell you otherwise. If you need someone to speak, go straight to Phil. I'm sure he'd love <laughs> to speak for you. I'm just kidding, Phil. Uh, he, but he did a great job. And we hung out with the kids again, just like we did before. And after lunch, it was time for SMT. But this time, it was totally different because we were ready to go, and we were ready to step up and do what God had called us to do. And so we go out and we go to this first house. And as we get there, there's this whole family sitting there. And we're like, hey, can we come in and can we just talk to you guys? And so we go in and we talk to this family and the conversation is so good. And we're asking them about who they are. Asking them, what, what do you guys do? Are, is your family well? And our conversation leads to us asking, are you guys believers in Jesus Christ? And so as we go around, the whole family is saying yes and that they go to the church. But there's one man, and he's, he's kind of hiding in the doorway. So his head's out, but you can tell he feels uncomfortable. And so, of course, we look at him and we say, are you a believer in Christ? And he says, no. And so we're like, why? And his answer was kind of shocking to me because his answer was that he liked to hang out with his friends and play basketball on Sundays. That was his answer. And you know, I'm like, in America, that is not an answer you're gonna get, right? I just, I like to hang out with my friends and I like to play basketball on Sundays. I don't know to tell you. Well, there's a lot of Christians here that like to do a lot of things on Sundays instead of going to church. Just saying, not pointing any fingers, sorry. <laughs> but, so, but he says this, and this allows us to talk to him and say, dude, here's the gospel. Here's the message of how Christ loves you and he died for your sins. And not only just to die for your sins, but because he wants a relationship with you. And then we get to explain to him that having a relationship with Christ doesn't mean that you can't do the things you love to do. It just means that you're going to enjoy them even more. And we share this with him and we talk with him. And this conversation goes on for 20 minutes as we're talking with him and just sharing verses and sharing the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And after this conversation, we say, do you want to have a relationship with Christ? He says, yes. And so this man, and honestly, it kind of breaks my heart because I wish I knew his name, but we don't even know his name. But this man, we got to sit down and pray with him and lead him to Christ that day. And I will tell you that if you would have asked me before, I would say I would never have thought that I would lead a guy in a different country to Christ. But being able to be a part of that experience and just seeing how God works just in us coming and talking with him, having the boldness to ask those questions and to seek them out was so incredible. And like I said, he loved basketball. And so Antonio was like, how about we'll play you in a basketball game? And if we beat you in basketball, you've got to go to church on Sunday, <laughs> you know? And so the family's laughing and he's laughing. And this was the guy's answer. He said, I will go to church either way. But if you beat me in basketball, I will invite my friends to go with me. And so it was just so awesome. It was so awesome to hear him say that. And so we were going to play basketball tomorrow, the next day with him. But after this house, we were like, we're good. 
we're, we're done, right? We're, I've got nothing left. I, I'm ready to go home. I, this was just such an incredible experience. But the day was not over. And so after that house, we went to the next house. And the next house was the village president's house. So this was pretty cool. This is the president of the village. And that's her hugging Antonio right there. And that's also her when she's raising her hand. She's singing some songs with us. But we go to her house, and she is just sharing her testimony. And she's sharing how she's been the village president for 30 years, and she's talking all about how for over 30 years she is working with different missionary groups. And she's bringing them into her village and doing the best that she can so that these people can hear the gospel of Christ. And the whole time we're talking to her, she's got pictures all over the walls. Every corner you look, there's pictures of her with all these different missions groups. And it's just all these memories flooding in of the things that she's doing for the gospel in this community. And like I said, she sang songs with us, and we sang Amazing Grace with her. And we're sharing verses back and forth. And it gets to the point where we're like, one day, we're not going to need a translator anymore. We're going to see her in heaven, and we're going to talk face to face, and it is going to be incredible. And it, it was just so filling. It was so joyful to see that God is moving in this place, that he's got the village president working by his side to do whatever she can to bring the gospel to her community. And so we were so filled on Monday. Monday was probably one of the most incredible days that we've had, and for me, one of the most incredible days in my life. But we still had one more day, and we go to Tuesday. This is our last day in the DR, and I think Monday might have gave us a lot of energy because we were ready. We were ready for the next day. And we go to the village, and we played with the kids, and it was time for our VBS lesson. And our lesson this time was on the death and resurrection of Christ. And everything we spoke about before, all the other days, was leading up to this day. And it was leading up to the gospel message so these kids would know and understand that God loves them enough that he died on the cross for their sins. And that he wants a relationship with them. And so we give this message. And after the lesson was over, I asked them, is there anyone who wants to share what they learned today? And there was a couple hands that shot up in the air. But the first one, uh, his name was Miskavit. And the translator asked him, what did you learn? And this is what he says. He says, God loved me, and he died on the cross for my sins. And hearing that was just so incredible, but it doesn't stop. Because he said, have you ever given your life to Christ? And he says, no. And so, of course, I'm like, do you want to? And he says, yes. But not only that, then we asked, is there any other students in here that want to give their life to Christ? And immediately, I, you know, I say that, and the translator next to me says it, so I'm waiting for responses. And as soon as he stops talking, 20 hands, straight up in the air, ready to go. And we're like, let's do this. Let's get in a circle. Let's pray um, the salvation prayer with these students. And it was so, so incredible. And I know that as kids, it's very easy to think, you know, some of them might not have meant it. But I know that the seed of the gospel is planted in their hearts. And I know God can use that seed, whether they meant it that day or whether it's going to explode in the future. I know that we can trust and know that the seed of the gospel is in their hearts and that they understand and know who God is and what he did for them. And it was just so awesome because that's, that's what we yearned for. In doing VBS, it wasn't just, yeah, we just want to teach the kids about uh, the Bible. And it was more than that. It was, I don't want you to just know about it. I want you to run to it. I want you to come to it and come to a relationship with God. And so Tuesday was another incredible day. And after that, we went to our faded basketball game. And we met him at the court, and we picked teams. And I'm pretty sure that the Lord was on our side <laughs> because we're not that great at basketball. Okay, Basketball is not my sport. I'm just being honest with you. If Michael was there, it might be a little different. The Lord might have been on our side, but... Michael was there. So. But we, 
to put it plainly, we crushed the guy, <laughs> okay? We, we did so well, and we're like so excited, but after it was done, it wasn't even like, okay, now you gotta invite your friends to church. It was just, we just had a relationship with him. And he was so excited, and he wasn't even mad, he was just excited that we went and we played basketball with him. And it was exciting to play basketball with a new brother in Christ, and knowing that he was gonna be in heaven with us one day. And of course, Wednesday, it was time for us to head home. And it was such an incredible trip for us. And God used us in so many different ways. But like I said at the beginning, he did not only use us, he spoke to us. And he taught us so many different things about him. And so what I did was, before I close, I just want to go over, I asked everyone who went, and I said, I want you to tell me what is the number one thing that God taught you while we were on this trip? And so I want to go through these things, but before I do, um, I'm a little sad about this, but Brianna, who went with us, and I know God did incredible things in her heart, she actually, right after the trip, she moved to Alabama with her family, and as she was up there, she's got job interviews, and she's got a lot of stuff going on, and so I wasn't able to get her point from her. But I do want you guys to know that God did incredible things in our lives. And for me being the youth pastor and her being younger, just seeing God move in her, and even Antonio, seeing him move in these students was incredible. And so don't feel like she was left out, because she wasn't, and God did awesome things. But the first person I wanna share is Antonio. And Antonio's main point that he learned was he learned about the perfect love of God. And this point drives home for me because I think in America, we all know the verse John 3, 16. We all know that it says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son and whoever believes will have eternal life. But when you go to a different country and you see the difference in the people there, you realize that when it says, for God so loved the world, the world becomes a lot bigger. And we realize though that even things are different, there's still people and they still have hearts that yearn for something more. They're not just different just because they don't have as much as we do. They yearn for more and they yearn for something that they might even even know about the gospel. And so we go here and we realize that God not only died for us in America, it's not all about America. He died for the world. And he is able to cover the sins of anyone who comes to him. And so we're seeing the perfect love of God, how he wants a relationship with these people in the Dominican Republic. And we're seeing them as people just like us and people that we want to share the gospel with. And not only that, because God's perfect love doesn't stop with the gospel. Because now that we have come to the gospel, and now that we know the perfect love of what God did for us, his love is working inside of us, and we share that same love. And I love the way Antonio puts it. He says, God took five different people to a different country where we don't even speak the same language, but God can still show his perfect love through us and reach out to those in need. And I love that because you don't have to be someone special to share the love of Christ. We all think that sometimes we have to have this perfect life and you know, if you're a pastor, you're definitely gonna do way more for the gospel. If you're someone who's serving in the church constantly, you'll do way more for the gospel. And those, not necessarily the pastor, because not everyone's called to that, but serving in, this, in the church is something we are called to do. But I'm telling you, you do not have to be a special person in the world's eyes to do something awesome for the gospel. And I, I mean, we were three 20-year-olds and two 18-year-olds. Okay, do you really think the world would be like, oh, good job, you sent them? They'd be like, why did you send them? Why did you pick them? They're nuts. They're not, that's not who we'd send. We would send the people who've been doing this. That one guy who said he's been in the DR for 30 years, we'd take that guy for sure. He's been doing it for a long time. 
We would take all these people who have all the experience and they went to college and they have their masters in ministry. Those are the people we would take. But that's not how God operates. God says, listen, if you've come to Christ and you are willing to serve with me, I'm going to use you for incredible things. You just need to be willing and I'm going to do the work. And we don't have to be anyone special. Look at the disciples, okay? The disciples were fishermen, a tax collector. One guy was called a zealot, which is just a revolutionary. And then the other six, we have no idea what they did. We don't even know who, who they were before. And God's not like, you know what, I chose you because of the awesome things that you've already done. That's not how he works. He chose them because they were the ones he knew were going to be willing to do what they were called to do. And they went and they did one of the most incredible things in history through the power of Christ. And so you don't have to be someone special. We just have to be willing to go. 1 John 4, 10 through 12 says, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. And so God's love is being perfected in us as believers and we should go out and share that love with others. And this leads to my second point and this is Phil's point. And Phil says, that he learned that the gospel transcends everything. And for me, this point kind of hits the nail on the head because this world is filled with pain. This world is filled with evil. When we go to the Dominican Republic, we see that their life is nowhere near the same as the life that we live here. They don't have that much. We asked one guy, what do you do uh, during your free time? And he was like, nothing. <laughs> He's like, I just hang out. I, I hang out with friends, and that's, that's all we kind of got to do. And there's just so much in this world that leads us to think that the world is broken, and there's no way to fix it. And realizing on this trip that the gospel transcends all of that. The gospel is more powerful than all the hurt and all the brokenness and everything that we look at in our world, and we're like, our world's falling apart, and I don't know what to do about it. The gospel is what we do about it, because the gospel is what overcomes all of that. Christ overcame sin and death on the cross, and he rose again. It transcends all those things that we think it can't. And, you know, Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. And so it didn't matter that we didn't speak the same language. It didn't matter that these people didn't have that much. It didn't matter that we were young and had no missions experience whatsoever. None of that mattered. What mattered was that there is power in the gospel and in salvation, and it is for all who believe. And sometimes I think we are afraid to share the gospel because we have forgotten how powerful it is. And I'm gonna say that one more time. I think that sometimes we are afraid to share the gospel that is in us because we have forgotten how powerful it is. And this kind of hit me very hard on the youth trip. We just went on our youth trip last weekend. And as we're there, as a youth pastor, not even as a youth pastor, but just in general in America, we hear that teenagers are distracted. And the statistics of the amount of teenagers that come to Christ is low, way low. And we hear all this and we hear it, we're like, how, how are we ever gonna save these kids? How are we ever going to bring them to Christ? And it becomes to this point where I think some people are like, I don't know if it's possible. And I think some people, and I wouldn't say this about anyone in here, but I think some people are like, why are you even wasting your time? Why are you wasting your time on kids that will probably never come to a relationship with Christ? And we're on our youth trip, and I would beg to differ, because we are sitting in a hotel room, and all we have is one guitar, and we are singing praises 
to God with 30 students, and they are singing as loud as they possibly can. And all they cared about in this moment was, I just want to worship, and I want to be in a spot where I'm going to bring praise and honor to the one who saved me. That's all they cared about. And sitting in that room, I realized that there is power in the gospel, and God does not care what the statistics of the world are. He doesn't. What he cares about is that he died on the cross for our sins, and he longs to have a relationship with every single one of us. Longs for it. Second Timothy says he desires all men to be saved and to come to the gospel. And so we've got to throw out all these things where we're like, man, I don't know if the gospel is powerful enough, and I will tell you it is. It is powerful enough to transcend all things, and we can never forget that. And this leads to my third point, and this is my point. And it is that true love is action. And growing up in the church, I've always known and heard we are called to love. Uh, Ephesians 5.2 says, And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And so I've always known that we are, we're called to love. We're called to love just as Christ loves the church, just as Christ loved us and gave up his life for us. But I kind of realized on this trip, and I'm not saying that I've never done this. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is that love is not just an idea. It's not just a, thro- a thought process where we're like, you know what, I, I want to love, and I know that I will love, but it's an action. We can't just sit around and wait for people to come to us so that we can love them. We can't look at them afar and say, man, they're going through a lot, and if they come to me, I'll love them, but I'm not gonna take the time to walk up to them. That's not love. Love is taking the action to go and seek people to love. It's not waiting for them to come to you. It's going to them and showing that love. And look at the life of Jesus. Look at the woman at the well. Could you imagine if Jesus was there And he said, you know what, I'm just going to sit back. And if she comes and she talks to me, then I'll love her. She would have never talked to him. I mean, he was a Jew and she was a Samaritan. She would have looked at this guy and been like, I'm just going to avert my eyes and make sure that I don't say anything to him because he might freak out at me. But what he does is he goes up to her and says, listen, I can give you water where you will never be thirsty again. And I'm going to share with you that I am the one who has come to save the world. He goes to her and he loves her. Look at the disciples again. Could you imagine if Jesus was like, you know what? The first 12 people that come to me, those are the people that I'll make my disciples. Those are the ones that I'll love and I'll share the gospel with them. That's not what he does. He goes to them and says, hey, listen, I'm going to make you fishers of men. If you come and follow me, I'm going to show you the way, the truth, and the life. But I'm coming to you, and I'm telling you that this is what you can have, and this is the life that we have to live. Just like Christ, we have to go and say, listen, I love you, and I want to show it to you so that you can see the love of who God is. I'm not just going to sit around and wait. I'm going to go, and I'm going to show it because true love is action. And the last point, and definitely not the least, is Tories. And Tories is being bold in our faith. And when we were on the missions trip, we were told not just in sharing the gospel. They didn't say, hey, be bold and share the gospel. They said, be bold in every action, in every word that you say, boldness. Be bold in the way you talk to people. Be bold in the way that you show your love to them. And do not hold anything back. And I love what Tori says about this. She says, we need to be bold in our faith to the point where we may cross some society-made boundaries, asking people why they feel certain ways and what makes them a Christian. We should ask them how they view themselves rather than how does the world view them. We should be bold enough to not worry so much about offending people if it could possibly bring them closer to knowing who Christ is. And so we should have the boldness in sharing the gospel, but not only that, in everything that we do, 
to go and say, listen, I love you and I wanna help you and so I'm gonna be bold and I'm gonna talk to you. And if there's things you're struggling with, I'm gonna be bold enough to tell you, hey, you're struggling with this, but I know a God who can help you with that. I'm not gonna hold back just because I'm afraid to hurt your feelings because that's not the gospel. That's not the way that Christ lived. And he's saying, listen, I'm coming to you to help you, not just to say, I'm gonna sit back and if you want my help, you can get it. It's the same idea. We have to have the boldness to go and be bold in our actions. And this is the apostles' prayer, Acts 4, 27, 31. This is one of their prayers that they prayed. It said, for truly in this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And so what they're saying is there are people in this place right now that are against us. And they are doing whatever they can to stop us from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and to stop us from doing, and they will do anything. And then when you look at Acts, you'll see that they did some crazy things to stop the name of the gospel. Here's their prayer, though. It says, And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And the apostles didn't look at the threats of the world, and they didn't look at the things around them to say, you know what, maybe we should take a step back and let's hide a little bit. And then after we hide, maybe these people will go away. And then once they're gone, we'll step out, we'll share the gospel, and then we'll step back, make sure everything is okay. And then we'll go, that's not their prayer. Their prayer is all these things are against us. God, I pray that you give us boldness to go out and continue to do the exact same thing we were doing before. And all those things, we know you will take care of it. And honestly, if it leads to our death, we don't care. Because I pray that we have boldness to do what you have called us to do. And in that same way, our heart cry, wherever we're at, should be to have that same boldness. To not be afraid to go out and share the gospel. To not be afraid to go out and speak out against the world. We are called to be separated from the world, and I'm telling you, the world should know that you are separated. And if the world doesn't know that you're separated from them, that scares me. Because we are called to be separate, and the world should know that we are separate. Because they need to know that there's something better out there. And as of right now, they may not know it. But if we never show them, how will they ever know it? And so we need to have the boldness to step out. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And that same Holy Spirit that moved in the apostles and let them go out to speak with boldness is the same Holy Spirit inside of you. And I, we say this all the time, but we just, it's almost like I feel like we can't get that right. We can't understand that the apostles, the apostles that walked on this earth and went out and spoke with boldness and were put in prison and were beaten and were killed for their faith, the same spirit that drove them to continue with boldness is the same spirit inside of us. We do not have a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And we need to remember that that spirit is in us and to go out and have boldness. And I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about what God did with us in this trip. And I pray that, like I said at the beginning, all these things that we learned and all the things that God put us through, I pray that it touched your heart so that as a congregation at Freedom Bible Church, the things that we went through there and the things that we learned would be the same things we use to go out in Port Charlotte, Northport, Punta Gorda, and to share the gospel and to share the perfect love of Christ and to be bold in all of that and not be afraid of what society might say or not be afraid of honestly what our best friend would say because our society needs the gospel and we are the ones that can go and give it. Um, before we go out, I'm going to pray and 
after I pray, we have a slideshow for you guys just to give you some more pictures of what happened on this trip. And so I'm going to pray. We'll do that slideshow. And then there will be one more song at the end. God, I'm so thankful for the experiences that you've given me. And I'm thankful for this church that has taught me what it means to be a believer and what it means to go out and share your word. And I pray that we would be bold in our actions and bold in the love that we share so that we can continue to do the ministry that you have called us to do. And I know that Freedom Bible Church has already done so many incredible things over the year, and I know that you want to continue to do incredible things. And so give us, give us boldness to go out and boldness to love and worship you and all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Please stand and we'll worship.
service. Thank you. Awesome message from Nathaniel. Uh, real quick, I wanted to let you know about a couple things. Uh, we have a men's Bible study starting up on Tuesdays. It's going to start August 13th, and it's going to be at 6.30 p.m., and it's going to be a great study. All you men, I would love for you to sign up and join us on Tuesday evenings. Please sign up at the lobby table. And also, the third annual Daughters of the King event is going to be happening soon on August 17th. That's a Saturday. And um, women, um, daughters, children, you can join us for that. That would be a wonderful thing. Please sign up at the lobby table for that. And last announcement is youth starts this Wednesday. I know uh, Wednesday night Bible study is going to start in a couple weeks, but youth is this Wednesday. So youth group, be ready to go, and we will be there, and we're excited, all right? So thank you guys for joining us today, and uh, we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.